Hello everyone, thanks for watching and welcome to this video on elasticity and its application. As usual, a few things before we get started. So one, if you're watching this video because you are struggling in the class right now, I want you to stay positive and keep your head up. If you're watching this video, it means you have accomplished quite a bit already. You are very smart and talented, but you may have hit a temporary rough patch. Well, I know that with the right amount of hard work, practice and patience, you can work through it. So I have faith, patience in you, I have faith in you, and many other people have faith in you. And so, so should you too. So feel free to follow um, this channel by subscribing to it or even following us on Facebook or LinkedIn at Pop Intel Limited. Um, that way, when we upload new videos, you'll know about it. And it's always nice to connect to our viewers. Three, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your classmates, or put it on your playlist. Um, that encourages us to continue making them for you. And on the flip side, if you think there are a few things we can do better, don't hesitate to leave a constructive comment below in the comment box, and we'll take those ideas and comments into account when we make new ones. Finally, uh, just remember that these videos are introductory. Uh, they are meant to help you brush up on your uh, concepts of economics or economic concepts and theory. And so the presentation will be slow in a deliberate manner to enable you to follow through the processes. Having said all of this, let's get started. So in this lecture, we are going to look for answers to the following questions. What is elasticity? What kind of issues can elasticity help us understand? What is the price elasticity of demand? And how is it related to the demand curve? How is it related to revenue and expenditure? And what is the price elasticity of supply? How is it related to the supply curve? What are the income and cross price elasticities of demand? Let's have a look at this scenario. So you design websites for the local business or for local businesses. You charge $200 per website and currently sell 12 websites per month. Your costs are rising, including the opportunity cost of your time. So you are thinking of raising the price to $250. The law of demand says that you won't sell as many websites if you raise your price. How many fewer websites would you sell if you raise your price? And how much will your revenue fall or might it increase if you raise your price? So what is elasticity? So the basic idea is that elasticity measures how one variable responds to changes in another variable. So one type of elasticity measures how much demand for your website will fall if you raise your price. So how much will the demand for your website respond to a change in the price of the website? So in simple terms, we can define elasticity as a numerical measure of the responsiveness of quantity demanded or quantity supply to one of its determinants. In this case, we'll look at price. So let's look at price elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand measures how quantity demanded responds to a change in demand. And we can compute price elasticity of demand by looking at um, this formula indicated above. 
So basically price elasticity of demand is, is a percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. And loosely speaking, we'll say that price elasticity of demand measures the price sensitivity of a buyer's demand. So let's look at this example. So at P1, price one, quantity demanded um, is shown here. Now, when price rises from P1 to P2 by 10%, we observe that quantity demanded falls by 15% from P1 to P2. Now, what is the price elasticity of demand? We will find the price elasticity of demand by dividing the change in the quantity demanded of 15% by the change in the price of 10%. And so 15% divided by 10% gives us 1.5 as our price elasticity of demand. So let's take note of these few things. So along a demand curve, price and quantity demanded move in opposite directions, which uh, would make price elasticity negative. We will, however, drop the minus sign and report all price elasticities as positive numbers. So how can we calculate the percentage change in a variable. As we can see here, price changes from $200 uh, dollars from point A to $250, which is point B. And we can see that when price changes from $200, uh, quantity demanded also changes from 12 to 8, point price is $250. So we can use many approaches to calculate the percentage change in a variable. And the very first one we'll look at is what is referred to as the standard method of computing percentage changes. And we can do this by subtracting the start value from the end value and dividing the results by the start value and then multiplying whatever we obtain by 100%. So in this example, we would see that our start value is the $200. That was the initial price. And then the end value is the $250. That's the end value or the end price. So if we subtract 200 from the end value of $250, we would obtain um, fifty dollars, and the initial value of two hundred dollars. If it divides the the, the fifty dollars and multiplied by one hundred percent, should give us a twenty five percentage change. So this graph here illustrates your demand or the demand care for your website. Now there's a problem. Uh, when we use a standard approach. And that problem is that we will get different answers depending on where we start from. Okay, so I'll show you this. For example, if we start from A to B, we see that price rises by 25%. Quantity falls by 33%. And our price elasticity is 1.3%, as we can see on the slide. Now, when we start from B to A, we see the price falls by 20%, quantity demanded rises by 50%, and our price elasticity is 2.5. And so to resolve this problem, we will use what we call the midpoint approach, which is an improvement upon the standard method. So in this case, Instead of dividing the results after 
the difference between the n value and the start value by the start value. We will divide the difference by the midpoint. And that brings us to um, this question. What is the midpoint? So the midpoint is a number halfway between the start and the end value which we would also refer to as the average of the two values. So once we use this approach, it doesn't matter which value you start with, whether the start value or the end value, you would get the same answer either way. So let's look at this. So using the midpoint approach, the percentage change in P would equal our end value of $250 minus our start value of $200. Now the midpoint, uh, which is the average between the two variables is $225. So if we multiply the results by 100%, we get a percentage change of 22.2%. Now the percentage change in quantity would also equal 12 uh, which is the end value and eight which is the initial value divided by the midpoint which is the average of 12 and 8 and the percentage change is effectively 40 percent and so our price elasticity is the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price which is 1.8 now let's consider these active learning example and this example is based on the previous figures we have used. So use the following information to calculate the price elasticity of demand for hostel rooms. If price is equal to $70, quantity is equal to 5,000. If price is $90, quantity demanded is 3,000. Now, what is the answer? So use, using the midpoint, approach to calculate uh, percentage change in quantity. We observe that the percentage change in quantity uh, is 50%, and then the percentage change in price is 25%. Now our price elasticity of demand is two. Now let us look at what the determinants of price elasticities are. And to learn the determinants of price elasticity, we'll look at a series of examples, okay? And each example compares two common goods. So the first one, so suppose the prices of both goods rise by 20%. Now the goods for which quantity demanded falls the most in percentage has the highest price elasticity of demand. Which good is it and why? So what lesson does the example teach us about the determinants of the price elasticity of demand? So these are the things we will be looking at. So let's start with our first example. Here we are comparing Rice Krispies versus sunscreen. So the price of both of these goods rise by 20%. For which goal does quantity demanded drop the most and why? Now, Rice Krispies has lots of close substitutes. Example, we have Cap'n Crunch, we have Count Chocula. So buyers can easily switch if the price rises. On the other hand, sunscreen has no close substitutes. So consumers would probably not buy much less if its price rises. Now, the lesson is that price elasticity is higher for close substitutes when they are available, when they are available. Now let's look at example two. In this case, we are comparing blue jeans versus clothing. So the prices of both goods rise by 20%. For which good does quantity demanded drop the most and why? Now for a narrowly defined good such as blue jeans, there are many substitutes. So you have khakis, you have shorts, you have speedos. And there are fewer substitutes available for broadly defined goods. And can you think of a substitute for clothing? 
um, other than living in a nudist economy. Now, the lesson here is that price elasticity is higher for narrowly defined goods than for broadly defined goods. Our third example is a comparison between insulin and the Caribbean cruises or cruises to the Caribbean islands. Now, insulin is um, a medication for uh, people with kidney problems. So when the prices of both goods rise by 20%, which of them experiences a significant drop in their quantity and quantity demanded and why? So 2 million of diabetics, insulin is a necessity. So a rise in its price would cause little or no decrease in the quantity demanded. Now a cruise to the Caribbean islands is a luxury. If the price rises, some people will forgo it. And the lesson here is that price elasticity is higher for luxuries than for necessities. Now our fourth example is a comparison between the price and quantity of gasoline in the short run and in the long run. So the price of gasoline rises by 20%. Does quantity drop more in the short run or in the long run and why? There's not much people can do in the short run other than ride a bus or a carpool. Uh, in the long run, however, people can buy smaller cars or live closer to their work. And the lesson here is that price elasticity is higher in the long run than the short run. So let's look at a summary of the determinants of price elasticity. So the price elasticity of demand of a good or service depends on one, the extent to which clothes substitutes are available, two, whether the good is a necessity or a luxury, three, how broadly or narrowly the good is defined, four, the time horizon. And we, from here, we know that elasticity is higher in the long run than in the short run. Now I'd like to start or continue by looking at the variety of demand curves available. So usually economists will classify demand curves according to their elasticities. So the price elasticity of demand is closely related to the slope of the demand curve as we see. And the rule of thumb is that the flatter the curve, the bigger the elasticity and the steeper the curve, the smaller the elasticity. So the next five slides present the different classification from at least two more most, from the least to the most elastic. So we start with perfectly inelastic demand. So with perfectly inelastic demand, the demand curve is vertical as we can see here, which means that at various prices, the quantity demanded is the same. What this means is that quantity does not respond to changes in price. And for that matter, the elasticity of demand uh, is zero. As we can see here, if price changes from one to P2 by 10%, our uh, quantity demanded is zero because there's no change. And so 0% divided by 10% is zero. The second curve I want us to look at is the inelastic demand curve. And here we are saying that this demand curve is relatively steep. And so consumer price sensitivity is also relatively low. And the elasticity is less than one, as we see. So for example, if price drops by 10%, we see that 
uh, the quantity rises less than 10 percent and so as we can see here the price elasticity is less than one the third demand curve we look at is the unit or unitary elastic demand with this type of um, curve uh, we would often classify this as an intermediate slope and the price elasticity is also intermediate. Now, the elasticity is one. And so, for example, when we see that price drops from P1 to P2 by 10%, quantity demanded rises also by a commensurate 10%. And so 10% divided by 10% is equal to one. The fourth demand curve is the elastic demand. With elastic demand, the curve is flatter. And so uh, price elasticity is relatively high and our uh, price elasticity is greater than one. So when price drops from one P1 to P2 by 10%, quantity demanded rises by more than 10%. So as we can see here, the price elasticity is greater than one. The fifth demand curve is the perfectly elastic demand. So this type of curve is horizontal. Price sensitivity is extreme. Uh, some people will classify this as an infinity. So uh, when price changes by 0%, in other words, when price is fixed, uh, where P2 is the same as P1, we see that consumers respond by demanding different quantities. So as you can see, uh, quantity demanded changes by any percentage. And so this results in what we refer to mathematically as infinity. Now, does the elasticity of, or the price elasticity of demand for a good the same as uh, its slope? So one of the things you would see is that the slope of a linear demand curve is constant, but its elasticity is not. And I will show you this by looking at this um, diagram here. So you've observed that when you find the price elasticity uh, by reducing price from $30 to $20, uh, you realize that quantity demanded will increase from zero to 20% and your price elasticity will be 5%, five actually. Now, when you, when price drops from $20 to $10, you'd observe that quantity uh, demanded uh, increases from 20 to 40. Now, when you compute the price uh, elasticity of demand, it is one and not five. And then the last one, when price drops from 10 to zero, you observe that quantity increases from 40 to 60 and the commensurate price elasticity is 0 0.2. So it's important to note that um, even though on a linear demand curve, uh, the slope is constant in terms of change, the price elasticity of um, this good along this constant demand curve is not constant too, it changes. So I will end this section here, and then I'll do a part two of the remaining uh, slides. Thank you for watching and stay glued and look out for the second slide.